anytime, anywhere. Don't be caught off guard. Make sure you prepare. Hurricane or quick a tsunami. Fire and flood threaten your safety. Danger approaching, pay attention to the warnings and advisories. Your essential life, dumps back and ready. So you won't be scrambling in an emergency. Prepare and be aware. This message is brought to you by the Department of Emergency Management. Hello and welcome to Real Talk in the Face of Danger, a podcast series by the Department of Emergency Management. I'm your host, Diane Fort. And today we're chatting with Dr. Nika Archer, who is Engineering Manager with the Barbados Light and Power Company Limited. She has responsibility for system reliability. Well, recently, the Barbados Light and Power seemed to be right there in the face of danger following the passage of Hurricane in Elsa. Everybody was talking about the Barbados Light and Power. Good days and not so good days. Dr. Archer, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Let me start by saying the reliability, since that is your area of responsibility, of the Barbados Light and Power system. How reliable is it? Very. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Reliability is about being able to, you know, in the case of the hurricane, be able to maintain the system to a point. Outside of the hurricane every day, like maintenance, um, doing inspections on poles, different assets, changing them out before they fail. That's what we focus on. So it's an inspection and developing these maintenance programs to then execute and replace the assets as required. Okay, so that is ongoing. Is there anything specific that you do um, when you know it's hurricane season, for example? Specifically, when it's hurricane season, we might increase the tree trimming, the frequency of tree trimming. We might do a little bit more than that. But as it relates to the poles, we have about 72,000 poles. So we can't wait to just before hurricane season to focus on the poles. So we actually have a, a pole testing and replacement program that's ongoing. Okay, based on whatever research you guys probably do, your procurement policy, I'm guessing at it here, um, what category hurricanes should your equipment be able to withstand? I don't know if that's a fair question, but as a lay person, I'm just wondering if there's such a thing. Right, so if we start at the generation stations where we generate electricity, the buildings themselves are about a category three. The substations are about category three also. So the ones that people talk about, the poles, the transformers, the lanes now. We did a what we call a pole loading assessment study that states up to what category we can sustain in a hurricane. So for the worst case scenario, when I talk about worst case scenario, a utility pole with a transformer on it, on all the utilities, we can handle up to a cat two plus. All the other ones, I would say around a cat three. But what we did, coming out of the experience from Dominica, when we went down there, we increased the size of our poles when we replaced them now um, to a pole of a bigger diameter, meaning that those poles that we're replacing from, I would say 2019 onward, will probably take us to a cat three, cat four. So therefore, the question that we're going to ask is, what happened? Maybe it's a small percentage, but to us, it just seemed like thousands of Barbadians were without electricity. What happened in this particular case? So everyone went out about midday because of all the activity was going on in the system. We had an island-wide shutdown. Um, After that, we were able to restore the underground network. But... Moving on from that, the first step is to make sure that you have the generation there. We have to make sure the system is stable before we can start adding on customers. And even before that, we have to go out and do our assessments and then restore. The challenge that persons face is that they look out the window and say, OK, nothing is going on by me. But it's a network. In order to get to you, there are some miles of wires to get to you. And when you look up, you saw videos of flying um, palings, cutting down the wires. You see trees becoming uprooted. So the issue is that we had to do a lot to work upstream before we get to those customers who looked out the window and said, oh, by me, it's fine. I don't understand why light and power can't turn me on. Did the light and power turn the electricity off or it just went off? It went off because of the system during the storm. So that's what the system will do. It will go completely off to protect itself. If not, you will find not to get too technical, the frequency and the voltage flickering all over the place. So what we have protection in such a way that the system will turn right back off to allow us to start back up manually. Okay, what were some of the major challenges faced by your team um, while they were working to restore power safely to households? So the major challenge I will say is 
managing the expectations of customers. As you mentioned in your introduction, we had good days and we had bad days. Um, customers were looking out through the window and saying, I don't understand. And I know typically we restore within an hour or two. But as a hurricane situation, we had employees leaving, were out of supply for three to four days coming in. And when we actually asked persons, persons, it wasn't based on assessing. People saw videos with the palings flying, um, trees being rooted, wires on the ground. But it is a matter of persons willing to do without electricity most persons are not willing to do without electricity for more than two days so the hardest part of it was actually managing the expectations of the customers one of the questions on our minds would be what if something happened again mm -hmm. um what steps have you put in place to try to mitigate um the level of disruption that we've had you know or is there something that you can do within reason Within reason, I would say we're still in restoration mode. When we look at it, we had less than 0.5% of our poles coming out. We had issues relating to trees being totally uprooted. We had issues like flying debris, sighting the lines and what's not. We had about 18, 20 assessors assessing. If it was to happen um, two days from now, obviously we are still ending restoration. We usually go then, sit down, have a post mortem and see what we can do better. From an infrastructure perspective, I think we we have a plan. We have seven, 2,000 poles. Like we can't go and say we could go and plan, change the class, go bring in these other poles, change the class and do that overnight. So I would say that what we can do is probably look at our, our response, um, have that poor smartum and see how we could have done it differently. But we can't just go tomorrow and change all the assets and underground everything because that's a cost, which ultimately the customer will bear. That's correct. And we don't necessarily want that. Um, if there was something that you could say to us as customers um, that we could do, aside from the complaining that a lot of us did, um, that we could do to perhaps help the situation and to get us to the next point, um, which is full restoration, what would that be? So there are two things. My number one peeve is vegetation trees. Now, customers have trees. I mean, customer, there's so many trees around the island. We can't manage all the customer trees. So customers have these trees going into the lanes. Um, and when it gets to that point, then they have to call us. So there's a matter of managing your trees. Then when we come to cut trees, the coconut trees, the breadfruit trees, the ackee trees, that's a whole different story. Customers would then state claims, you know, this is my livelihood. You can't trim my tree. So the, the biggest part, it would be in assisting us with maintaining trees. Um, the second one is that we launched our ECI Restore app. I would say we had about 6,000 downloads. We had over 10,000 complaints. In the beginning, it was really good. It was really good to utilize the information. But then customers start to take pictures, take one picture of a pole really down. So by day four, they know that if a pole really down or we're sparking, we will rush and come. And that one picture will be found on about 30 different complaints. So persons were passing around the pictures and using that in the app to say, well, come to me quicker and what's not. But I must say that use of the app was really, really good. And but it's just things like that that could improve. Well, we certainly know that you guys have been doing a wonderful job, despite our complaining. And uh, on behalf of the Department of Emergency Management, we thank the Barbados Light and Power for the work you did in getting us up and running. As you said, it really was a small percentage. And we understand as consumers, any displacement is displacement for us. We Correct. want to be able to switch on and get what we need. But we do appreciate the work of the Barbados Light and Power. And we thank you very much for joining us on Real Talk in the Face of Danger, Dr. Nika Archer. Thank you. Thank you very much. And be sure to join us again in this podcast series from the Department of Emergency Management.